Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Today we're going to talk about this new research that's come, as you guys have probably heard it by now all over the news. There's new evidence that surfaced uh, regarding the Younger Dryas uh, boundary event. Um, they found a, a platinum spike in the dirt where the level at which dates to about 12,800 years ago in South Africa. Now this is only the second or third site, I think it's the second site, in which they found a platinum spike in the southern hemisphere that is dated and associated with the Younger Dryas boundary event. Very interesting stuff. Uh, there's this. Here is the um, visual here, and what you're seeing are all the different sites that where they found these platinum spikes. And the significance of platinum, obviously, is when it hit hit the Earth. There's all this stuff that's thrown up into the atmosphere that's called ejecta and within that ejecta it are large amounts of platinum and then when it comes back down it floats around in the atmosphere for a while and then it, it eventually gravity pulls it down and it lands it landed in all these uh, sites now these aren't the only sites obviously these are all the discovered sites but uh, the interesting part is yeah the wonder crater is the third one in the southern hemisphere has this uh, platinum in in the uh, levels dated toward 12,800 uh, years ago and again i did a i did a video on the on the palauco site in chile and it talked about the same thing where there is a, a platinum spike in the in the ground dating to that time and then there's another uh place in in the nor in um the northern part of um the of south america but again in the southern hemisphere now I think about a year ago, I did a video on um, the Hiawatha Impact Crater. Uh, if you guys can see this, near Greenland, where this red dot is, that's the Hiawatha Impact Crater. That is rumored and strongly suspected to be the comet impact that was largely responsible for the Younger uh, Dryas Boundary event. Now, there are a lot of different theories. Uh, one theory is that it was just one big rock and it... it, and it you know, it did its damage there. Another one is it went through the atmosphere, it broke into a bunch of different pieces, and then Earth got pelted, but kind of like a, a birdshot effect. Um, I, I tend to think that it, we were hit more than uh, by by more than one projectile. And um, if when you look at Europe, you can see as far east as uh, Asia Minor and the the the, the uh, almost the Middle East there. So the, the, here's the Caucasus Mountains, and here's Asia Minor here. Yeah, way further east, like near the Caspian Sea area. So again, just looking at this uh, map is just very, very telling. Because again, obviously when ejecta is thrown up, it a lot of stuff happens. It, 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 there's a long period of darkness. The sun is obscured for a while. Plants and animals end up dying, kind of like a domino effect. And again, we do see the extinction of certain megafauna, especially in the northern hemisphere, but also in in the southern hemisphere as well. There, there's not as much uh, death, not as much death as, as in the northern hemisphere, but there is there were some animals that didn't make it in Africa. And by the way, megafauna means any animal that weighs more than about a hundred pounds or so um so again it's very very interesting and this wonder crater place um is just a fascinating fascinating uh news item that has surfaced and again uh everybody always says that more and more stuff comes out every day and i don't expect this to be any different i think the younger dryas boundary in all my videos about the younger dryas i've always said that there's going to be something else there's going to be something else there's always more and more and there you go the, the wonder crater is very very interesting because again it's a southern hemisphere so if anything that younger dryas event if the, if the wonder crater is associated with the younger dryas boundary which i strongly think it, it is and a lot of other scientists think it is as well then we're really talking about a truly truly global event that happened 12 a far-reaching event that every single culture that has survived has some sort of story origin story about that derives 
from this. So again, yeah, uh, this is a world map that shows similarly uh, platinum spikes have been discovered around the world. So is this a coincidence? These all date around the same time. Platinum, like platinum here, platinum there, all over, uh, speckled across like four or five different continents. Very interesting stuff. So this team from South Africa, they uh, discovered evidence partially supporting a hypothesis that, that Earth was struck by a meteorite or asteroid 12,800 years ago, leading to global consequences including the climate change, contributing to the extinction of many species of large animals during the Younger Dryas. I just talked about that. Um, so in Limpopo province, north of Pretoria in South Africa, is this place called the Wonder Crater that I've been talking about the past four minutes. And there they found the platinum spike. They discovered the evidence from a core drilled in a peat deposit. And again, a sample is about 12,800 years old. So peat deposit um, is very, it, it, it's similar to a peat bog. So a peat bog is, they found a guy, there, a really ancient guy who got trapped in a peat bog. I think it was in Scotland or something. Well, the peat deposit conserves or preserves a lot of things within it. So this is very, very reliable dating and reliable um, methods that they used to come with this date here of 12,800 years ago. Um, noting that meteorites are rich in platinum, our finding at least par partially supports a highly controversial YDB impact hypothesis. We seriously need to explore the view that an asteroid impact somewhere on Earth may have caused climate change on a global scale and contribute to some extent the process of extinctions of large animals at the end of the Pleistocene after the last ice age. And of course, the Pleistocene is a period of time between starting about 2.4, 2.5 million years ago, all the way to the end of the last ice age, which again is punctuated by the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis or this impact event 12,800 years ago. And now we're in the Holocene, which has been the past uh, tw basically 12,000 years. Uh, so, or like 10, between 12 to 10,000 years, depending on who you ask. So again, the Pleistocene should be known as the, the, the epoch of humans because around 2.5 million years ago was, was allegedly the rise of Homo erectus and other uh, early hominin. And I did a video about that uh, not too long ago about another, an, the oldest uh, trace of human activity uh, within uh, the area of Jordan in modern day Israel. Around there, they found tools that date back around 2.5, 2.6 million years ago. So again, between then and now, there has, there's been some level of human activity. So it's very interesting just to uh, think about that in, in context. Um, that, that, because that raises the possibility that there were people who were living for, for millennia and then a uh, comic impact comes and just destroys everything. Uh, humans reset, the populations reset, and then we have just what, what's left are these origin stories like the flood myth, which is ubiquitous in all cultures. And then uh, the, Atlantis being the 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 pre-diluvian uh, society that was existing at the time, and then the comet comes and just wipes them off the face of the earth. So again, we have all these legends that must have some sort of truth to them because of just how ubiquitous they are. Um, many mammals. Again, this is another layer of evidence because around the same time, uh, we have a huge die-off of animals, especially in North America and South America. Um, mammals became extinct in North America, South America, and Europe at the time of the Younger Dryas. And again, when you look at the map, North America and, and Europe have the most uh, of these uh, platinum sites. And then also South America has three, and two of them being in the su Southern Hemisphere. So again, it does make sense that a lot of the megafauna would die in these continents. Um, in South Africa, a few extraordinary large animal species became extinct, not necessarily exactly 12,800 years ago, but close to that period. These megafauna include a giant African buffalo, a large zebra, and a very big wildebeest. So let's look at this again. So there, Africa experienced a large amount of megafauna die-off as well, although not as much and not as immediate. So that tells me that once the ejecta went into the atmosphere and and obscured everything it took a while for the stuff that wasn't immediately within the impact radius to die off 
from the residual effects. That, that to me seems pretty consistent with what is just stated uh, here. Um, human populations may have been indirectly affected at the time in question. In North America, there's a dramatic termination of the stone tool technology of Clovis people. Uh, we've talked about the Clovis tools ad nauseum in this channel. Um, but yeah, there were people who were living in North America at the time suddenly vanish and then you have this black mat and then from above the black mat is stuff that's post diluvian or i guess within the holocene um archaeologists in south africa have detected an almost simultaneous termination of the robert stone artifact industry associated with people in some parts of the country including the area around Boomplas near the kango caves in southern cape so again um with the Clovis people, you see this termination of, of the, su sudden termination of their tools. Same thing happens with people, the the indigenous people in South Africa as well. Their tools suddenly, the robber style of, of tools are gone. And then a few thousand years later, we have another surfacing of different tools. So again, that what does that mean? That's not random. It's not just uh, an outlier. That That's consistent with something. And it would be consistent with uh, a people who were living there thriving and then dying off suddenly and then coming back again uh so very very interesting stuff there uh, without necessarily arguing for a single causal factor on global scale we cautiously hint at the possibility that these technological changes in north america african subcontinent at around the same time might have been associated indirectly with an asteroid impact with major global consequences and again this is the part major global consequences that a lot of people don't really think about a lot of people, when they think of comet impact, they think a comet impact and everything is on fire. Well, that's not really the case. Only a, 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 po a large portion of the Earth, like a couple continents, were under heavy, heavy, they were devastated immediately. But then the after effect, the 1200 year period of just darkness and, and being plunged into the ice age again, um, in, in temperature wise, and then the earth heals on it, it takes a millennia or two for it to heal and then humanity reboots so that is all within this time frame it all makes sense um it's consistent anyway of course a lot of academics and a lot of researchers who have their careers on the line they're very cautious but if you read between the lines it's pretty obvious what happened uh, we cannot be certain, but a cosmic impact could have affected humans as a result of local changes in the environment and the availability of food resources, of course, the residual effects I was talking about, associated with sudden climate change. Basically, a, cat a catastrophic event causing uh, a change in climate um, because, you know, w temperatures plunge. If you look at the Greenland ice cores, temperatures actually they hit, they sky high and then immediately plunges. And that is indicative of a hot, and cold event which is consistent with an, a high impact high kinetic punch object hits the earth and of course there's an explosion hence the spike in in um in heat and then right after the temperatures drop because of the ejecta and the blocking out of the sun and all that stuff the nuclear fallout conditions essentially um, there's even more evidence. The team has evidence from pollen to show that about 12,800 years ago there was temporary cooling. Again, that's why they call it the Younger Dryas because of a plant that only grows in certain temperatures. The drop in temperature that is well documented in Northern Hemisphere is now in the south, uh, uh, Southern Hemisphere or South Africa. So that's in the record now, this temperature drop. So th again, a completely, truly global event, a far-reaching event, a global cooling, but a, a as a result of catastrophic event, not a gradual cooling. This cooling in widespread areas could at least potentially have been associated with the global dispersal of platinum-rich atmospheric dust. Um, again, because they happen contemporaneously together. So because of that, um, it, they're, they're related. Of course, causation doesn't equal correlation or correlation doesn't equal causation. But again, they are related. And you find this platinum rich atmospheric dust everywhere that that date to around the same period. Something must have happened for platinum to to float around so far reaching around the globe. And it's only a matter of time where they find more and more sites like this. Um, so and then they t they talk about Greenland, the Hiawatha Glacier, the, the crater that might have been responsible for uh, for all of this. Um, 
And then Thackeray's team believes their discovery of Platinum Spike at Wonder Crater is just part of the strengthening view that an asteroid or cometary impact might have occurred at that time. This is the first evidence in Africa for the Platinum Spike preceding climate change. Younger dry spikes in platinum have been found in Greenland, Eurasia, North America, Mexico, Palauco, and Chile, other parts of South America. And Wonder Crater is the 30th site for such evidence. And again, if you look at the map, look how far away it is from everything else. So that is, that is insane. So how much would you bet that there's another site in pro just in Africa that, that has this platinum spike? Probably, m more than likely, there probably is. Um, the source of the platinum at Wonder Crater could hypothetically be cosmic dust that was dispersed in the atmosphere after a meteorite impact in Greenland. There are thousands of large rocks distributed primarily between Jupiter and Mars. Oh, this is where um, they start going into the probability of another asteroid striking Earth. Um, and this kind of, you can take this with a grain of salt, but see if, the, if you want to freak out, keep listening. Uh, one in particular, again, one uh, of the large rocks between Jupiter and Mars, uh, classified as Apophis 99942, is referred to as potentially hazardous asteroid. 340 meters wide will come exceptionally close to the Earth in 10 years. So it'll take place on Friday, April 13th, 2029. Friday the 13th, baby. Friday the 13th, 2029. Be there or be square. The probability of that asteroid hitting us is only 1 in 100,000, but the probability of an impact may be even higher at some time in the future as it comes close to the Earth every 10 years. So again, Friday, is this a simulation, guys? I don't know. But Friday the 13th, uh, uh, impact poss possibly on the horizon. Who knows? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I need to look more into that. Let me know what you guys think about that. Where Should our money... As uh, uh, in the position that we are as Americans, I, not everybody who's watching this is American. Anyway, I'm American, but anybody, should we put more resources into some sort of system where we avoid uh, common impacts? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this. This is all over the news. Um, I want to get your opinion. What do you guys think of the platinum spikes? Where else do you see the platinum spikes um, being? Do you think it's just all over everywhere? Do you think that there there might be some evidence underwater still? Let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you guys later.